Our project studies pesticide runoff. The vegetative filter strips are basically buffer zones that you can plant between where pesticides are being applied and where they can end up. When you have a golf course or a cornfield or somewhere with pesticide application, there's a potential risk for pesticide runoff. When it rains, the rain can wash the pesticides off of where you applied them into local waterways or streams, which can then become contaminated. The main reason we're doing this research is for water protection. Normally they use turf grass for this, which works very well. We wanted to look at various plants being used in vegetative filter strips instead of turf grass. The plants work really well because they're able to phytoremediate, which means that they're able to take the pesticides from the soil and incorporate it into their tissue. Another form that the plants do is bioremediation, where the rhizosphere of the plants have bacteria that break down the pesticides into non-harmful chemicals. This study is a two-part study. In 2006, we did a greenhouse study where we took 10 known phytoremediators and planted them in pots in a greenhouse whose soil was dosed with six pesticides, two herbicides, two insecticides, and two fungicides. From this, we chose the five best plants that removed the pesticides from the soil. Those plants are planted in our vegetative filter strips out here. Blue flag iris, wool grass, prairie grass, big blue stem, and eastern gamma grass. We have four vegetative treatments. The first plot is a bare plot, which is our negative control. The second strip, we use a turf grass strip with a mixture of Kentucky bluegrass and fescue. The other two strips are planted with our five plants from the greenhouse study in two different arrangements to see which arrangement works best. The pesticides and bromide are mixed in this tank at 5% their application rate. That's the worst case scenario that's been shown in papers for how much pesticide can be taken off of the plots during a rainstorm. Yeah. These chemical transfer pumps take the water out of the tanks along these tubings and distribute them. At the top of the plots, they're placed in gutters. These gutters have holes drilled evenly across. This helps make an even infiltration rate all the way down the plot. Bromide easily mixes with the water but does not interact with the soil. So when the runoff water comes off, if we detect bromide in it, then we know that we're getting the runoff water and not the rain water. We ultimately want to see where the pesticides are ending up. So we test three things. We test the runoff water, the groundwater, and soil samples. The runoff water we collect in one gallon jugs as it comes off the plot. To test the groundwater, we use lysimeters. We have two lysimeters. The deep one is six feet down, and the shallow one is one foot down. They're attached to these tubings. We hook a vacuum pump up to the black tubing and we can sample through the white tubing. For soil samples, we use an undisturbed coil core, which we collect from six spots in the plot. We collect soil samples for the first week after the experiment. And then on the 14th day, the first month, the second month, the third month, six months and nine months later to see the fate of the pesticides over time. We use the overhead irrigation system because it's better than the in-ground irrigation system for simulating rainfall. In this study we have two events, a one-year rain event which is the biggest storm that comes through the area in one year and a five-year rain event which is the biggest storm that will come through the area in five years. Last year in 2009 we ran a one-year rain event. During the one-year rain event, we saw a little difference between the three vegetated plots, the turf grass plot, the secession plot, and the mixture plot. We're hoping to see a greater difference during the five-year event when more water will be applied and hopefully more runoff will be generated. We're hoping that vegetative filter strips will prove to be 
a good management practice to prevent pesticides from entering local waterways. This project's funded by the United States Golf Association, which is very interested in environmental protection.